Catherine, it's wonderful to have you here. Pleasure to be here, Jan. So, Americans United for Life, the first pro-life organization, I think, mm -hmm. right? National? Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell, us, tell me more. We were founded in 1971, two years before Roe v. Wade legalized abortion nationwide in America, all nine months of pregnancy, any reason. It struck down you know, the life-affirming protections in 49 states. And since before that came, we've been around fighting for life, um, conception and natural death, and, um, and have been involved in every single Supreme Court case on abortion since and including Roe v. Wade. So you're a primarily legal focused organization, is that right? Law, policy, and education. We hit the, the trifecta, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, so we do work in the state houses and Congress and the courts, but we also work in the culture. We work through um, through the administration, through regulations, and we work in the culture to uh, to change hearts and minds and just educate folks about, um, about the truth about abortion and about abortion law. You're a lawyer yourself. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about some litigation that you've been involved with? I have been involved in so much involving life. Um, you know, have argued cases, um, federal and state, um, you know, just fighting for um, for the protections in state laws for women and for children, um, for our right as a, as a society to know the truth about abortion, and, um, and just, you know, being able to fight for the most vulnerable members of our communities. Uh, when you look at, at abortion law in America, we are one of the four most radical nations in the world on right. abortion law. Mm -hmm. Right. So Tell me really quick um, why you would say that we are among the most radical nations with respect to this issue. That just doesn't seem possible. There are four nations in the world where abortion is legal for all nine months of pregnancy for any reason, and that's us, Canada, China, and North Korea. That's all. There's nine nations where it's legal um, and in the third trimester or up to the third trimester, but um, but only four where it's legal for all nine months. And um, and so that's something that we're working to fight back against. Increasingly, we're seeing states fight back, and in fact, uh, we have we're in the middle of this wave of life-affirming laws being passed, especially since 2011. In the last five years alone, we've seen more than 400 life-affirming laws passed by the states. And this is all at the state level, right? Yes, yeah. that's at the state level, um, the administration, the federal um, level, they're also trying to, uh, to, to institute protections, to stop taxpayer funding of abortion, to enact these common sense protections. Unfortunately, all too often, as we saw earlier this week, these measures uh, fail at the federal level where people are maybe, uh, lawmakers are a little bit farther removed from their constituents, right. a little bit less... Um, less responsive possibly, but you know, this week we saw 44 senators vote against basic medical care for children who have, who have been born alive during an abortion attempt. Um, no longer an issue of abortion, it's not about that, it's not an issue of, of women's health, the child is, is outside the woman's body, is born, and is just, you know, struggling for air maybe, and just needing a little bit of, of basic care, and, um, and 44 senators voted against that. What do you make of that? Um, I think that, um, that abortion activists, um, they are in a, at a point where they feel desperate. You look at, um, at New York, Virginia, uh, New Mexico, Illinois, Vermont, these states where, uh, where they're proposing these radical bills with uh, third trimester late-term abortions, with birthday abortions, we're calling them, um, even this kind of infanticide, you could call it. And, um, and I think they, they're looking at the makeup of the court the Supreme Court, they're looking at the trends in our nation and uh, and they're getting scared. They're realizing they're on the, lo the losing side. I see. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like a, a kind of an extreme response to a mm -hmm. fear that the abortion right. Do you, so I've, I've had a number of conversations related to this issue and the, mm -hmm. the sense I got, I was speaking with Lila Rose a mm -hmm. few days ago, mm -hmm. and the sense is she feels that there's just been a lot of misinformation mm -hmm. directed towards women around this issue. What's mm -hmm. your take on that? Absolutely. It is full of misinformation. Uh, number one, what happens when Roe is overturned? Um, our opponents would say, well, it's, it's illegal nationwide. No woman can access abortion. Um, absolutely false. Um, the idea that Roe v. Wade is settled law when um, constitutional scholars and jurists, even on the left, have said for decades since the time of Roe, and this, um, this is totally unsettled, that, um, that it was totally unattached to any constitutional principle, right. that um, even Justice Ginsburg said that Roe went too far too fast. Very interesting. Mm. And um, 
So, and what is the kind of misinformation that you see uh, directed towards, you know, women around themselves having an abortion, for example, mm. if, if they were, if, if they're in a situation where they may feel they need one? Right. Um, there is so much misinformation around that. It's hard to know where to start almost. And, and speaking as someone who is post-abortive, um, when I was 19 years old, I, um, I had an abortion myself. Mm. And... Um, you know, I, I went in because I thought I had no other choice. That's why I walked through those, the doors of that abortion facility. And um, nothing that happened to me there um, restored my agency, made me feel like I had a choice. It was um, completely coerced. And, um, and so women need to know that there are choices, there are life-affirming choices out there, that they are enough. We are like enough. Like adoption, right, would be the, sure. the simple... Like adoption, uh, like there are services out there to come alongside a woman who's going through, sure, perhaps a very tough time, but there are, um, there are agencies and there, there are resources that we have as a society um, to come alongside a woman and to, to help her through that time, whether it's financial or you know maybe an abusive partner, whatever it may be. There are resources out there, and women just need to know that um, that there's a way forward that can be life affirming, and um, and that there are people who are ready to stand by and help her reach a life affirming decision, whether she chooses to parent or to place that child in a loving home through adoption. And Americans United for Life can help with this. I Absol take it absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so we worked to pass those laws to give women the full informed consent that um, that I wasn't given uh, to make sure that their health and safety regulations to uh, to help connect people with those resources. Wonderful. Such yes. a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you.